Okay, so on my channel, I recently made a comparison video between the new 2020 MacBook Air and the old 2017 Intel-based MacBook Pro. Now, there were a couple of inconsistencies in that video that I said I would make a follow-up video on, and one of the big ones was that the MacBook Pro actually wasn't updated to Big Sur. So now, both of the MacBooks are on the exact same operating system, they both have File Vault enabled. They both have the same user login set up. All login items have been disabled on both machines. And they're both pretty much brand new installs of macOS Big Sur. So what I'll do now is I'll actually put up just the information for each machine so you can see for yourself what we're dealing with here. And as you can see, both on macOS Big Sur, this is obviously the new MacBook Air, and this is the older MacBook Pro. I'll also show you that file vault is enabled on both devices so as you can see there file vault is turned on and enabled so this is going to put both of these computers at pretty much the exact same spec now before we get started with the testing i just wanted to say that yes i know this is a macbook air and this is a macbook pro i mean guys i've only got 8,000 subscribers like i'm not a big tech youtuber so I can't afford to go out and buy the exact same model. I can only afford the MacBook Air with my budget at the moment. But I actually think that this is a really good comparison and possibly even better than an apples to apples Air to Air comparison. Because the old MacBook Pro generation versus the new MacBook Air generation is actually a super good comparison. Because throughout testing, I found the MacBook Air absolutely blows this out of the water. And I don't believe that the 2020 M1 MacBook Pro is worth the extra three or $400 over the MacBook Air. So in my opinion, I think comparing these two devices is actually a really cool comparison. And again, if you are after an apples to apples comparison, just jump onto YouTube, watch one of the big tech YouTubers, and I'm sure they'll have something for you. So moving on to some more app-based tests. Now, I'm not gonna get too technical in this video. I'll leave that up to the big tech YouTubers. I wanted to mainly focus on just everyday usage rather than just spitting out a graph on the screen and telling you how many milliseconds it takes per app. So what we'll do first of all is we'll start up the new Safari app. I'll take my phone away. We don't really need a timer for this. Now, if you notice in the last video, the MacBook Air was a ton faster than the MacBook Pro. And we'll see if this is still the same thing. So three, two, one. And look at that, just completely blazing fast again with the MacBook Air. The MacBook Pro has only just loaded it up now, well and truly behind. Now again, in both of these videos, all the browsers have been deleted. So there's no cookies, there's no caches, there's nothing. They're just stock standard default browsers. So if we shut that down, we'll do it one more time, three, two, one, go. And again, MacBook Air completely destroys the MacBook Pro. It's not even a comparison. So what we'll do now is we'll move on to Safari. Sorry, Google Chrome. Three, two, one, go. Now on the previous video, the MacBook Pro won out on this. And the reason I think it won is because Google Chrome isn't yet optimized for the M1 ARM-based architecture on the new MacBook Airs. So this is gonna be an x86 app running on an x86 native platform and also running on a non-native x86 platform. So that's why you'll probably see some discrepancy in performance. So let's try it again. Three, two, one, go. And you can see they're pretty much the exact same performance. All right, so now we're going to look a little bit more into the browsing capability of both machines. And this is also gonna look at multitasking as well because we're gonna have multiple tabs open in each browser. Now again, these Macs are almost exactly the same in terms of software and programs. And if we look at the Wi-Fi settings, they're both connected to the exact same five gigahertz Wi-Fi network. So if we come down and open up Safari, what we're gonna do is we're just going to go onto YouTube and we're gonna open up a couple of tabs and we'll just see how quickly they load. Okay, so we've got the same video here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hold down the command key. I'm gonna open up the same number of tabs. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And 
And if we click on these tabs, you can see Yep, definitely seems like the MacBook Air is loading them slightly quicker. Actually, a lot quicker. And you might be able to hear this, but the fan on the MacBook Pro has actually started up already, so. Okay, it's about the same now. So you can see from there fairly easily that the MacBook Air definitely did win out at the start. Once Safari on the MacBook Pro had had a little while to load, it started working okay, but you can see immediately off the bat, the MacBook Air was the clear winner. Now let's shut down Safari, and we're gonna try Chrome. So we'll open up the Chrome browser. Okay, so we have the same video here. Again, holding down Command, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And it looks as though the MacBook Pro is winning easily. So you can see there's actually a huge difference there. So we'll keep loading these tabs. There is a massive difference there. Now, this makes complete sense because like I said before, Chrome is an x86 optimized program, but it is not optimized for the new M1 Max. So that's why you're seeing such a big difference here because this particular version of Chrome is not optimized for this Mac. In the next couple of weeks or months when Google releases an updated version, I'm sure this will be fine, but as of right now, there is a clear advantage to the MacBook Pro. And again, you can hear the MacBook Pro fan has just started up again, although it's not quite as loud as it was before on Safari. So what we'll do is we'll actually go into Activity Monitor and we'll just have a quick look at what we can see here. Okay, so we can actually see that less of the CPU is being used on the new MacBook versus the old MacBook. You see we've got about 81% idle here and we've only got about 60% idle there. So that's an instant 20 to 30% improvement. Again, bear in mind, this version of Chrome is not optimized for this Mac at all. So that's actually quite impressive. And if we go into the memory tab, you can see this particular Mac is using a little bit more memory, although I think this is pretty inconclusive because I, in my opinion, this isn't a good indicator of RAM utilization. So there's about half a gigabyte to a gigabyte difference here. Again, not a huge difference. It might just be the difference in the processes that's causing it. So what we'll do now is we'll try DaVinci Resolve. Now I'm not gonna do a full editing and rendering comparison video between the two because I think that's its own separate video. So I'll link that up in the top right hand corner right now if you wanna watch. So just for the purpose of this video, we're just going to start it up and just see how well it loads and how quick it is between the two different models. Three, two, one, go. Now, bear in mind, this is DaVinci Resolve 16. I've tried many, many times to install the DaVinci Resolve 17.1 beta, which is supporting the Mac OS M1 but it just doesn't work. Every time I try to install it, it just gets an error. So I've only been able to use 16. And actually for the purpose of this video, 16 is best because the 17.1 version shouldn't actually work on the x86 platforms. As you can see there, there really wasn't a huge difference. So we'll try it one more time. Three, two, one, go. Now, if you are interested in seeing how this Mac performs on DaVinci Resolve, I have a card up in the top right-hand corner that will take you to that video. And as we can see, it loads a lot quicker on the MacBook Air version. MacBook Pro just finished now, but that is very much a win for the MacBook Air, which is very surprising because this is the version 16, 
which is not technically compatible or supported with this silicon. All right, so let's close that down. What we'll try now is some Adobe apps. So let's see if we can open up Photoshop. Again, exact same version of Photoshop. So three, two, one, go. And it looks like the MacBook Pro has won, but only just, only by a second or two. And again, that's very impressive because this version of Photoshop technically isn't supported or compatible on this Mac. I believe there is a beta out, which I'll be making a video on soon, which is a new version that's completely supporting the new ARM architecture. But as it is, that's pretty good. There's not really much of a difference there in terms of startup. Now, what we'll do as well is we'll do a quick comparison in the screen wake time. So through the magic of editing, I'm gonna leave these shut for two minutes and then I'll come back and we'll open them back up and we'll see which screen is the first to turn back on. All right, it's about two minutes later now, so I'm just gonna open them both up as quickly as I can and hopefully we can see a noticeable difference towards the MacBook Air because Apple has really marketed this feature a lot. Okay, and we can definitely see a noticeable difference there. So let's close it again and open it one more time, but a bit quicker this time. Okay, it doesn't make much difference if they've only been shut for about 10 seconds, but there is definitely a big difference there if they've been shut for a minute or two and the screen actually turns off. But again, I don't know how much of a huge difference this is gonna to make to your day-to-day -day usage because it's the difference of about a second or two. But apart from that, we'll move on to the next step. So without further ado, let's just jump straight into a restart test. Now, just like the last video, I'm going to restart this when the timer hits five seconds. I've only got two hands, so bear with me. So we'll start the timer. Well, first of all, actually, we will bring up the shut down. And let's just do a shutdown first, just to see if there's any difference. Okay, we'll wait till it hits five seconds. And it looks like they both shut down around the same time, but it looks like the MacBook Pro had a little bit of an advantage there. So let's reset this and let's turn them back on. So the new MacBook Air is first to post. And it looks like the MacBook Pro has got to the login screen first. Now, bear in mind, again, these are both fresh installs. They are also both running File Vault. So apart from the actual internals of the Mac, they are both pretty much exactly the same. So what I'll do now is I will log in to each one. So you can see there the MacBook Air, the 2020 M1 version just destroys the old MacBook Pro. This one and this one have pretty much exactly the same amount of files on it. So this is actually quite interesting. Now, the reason I have File Vault enabled is because I actually recommend everyone to have File Vault in case your laptop gets stolen or someone tries to steal data off it. It's always just a really nice thing to have enabled just in case. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to actually restart both machines. So we'll come up here, we'll click restart. We'll make sure reopen windows is turned off. When it hits five seconds, we'll go. So again, MacBook Air very, very quick to post with MacBook Pro just behind. And again, MacBook Pro gets to the login screen 
before the MacBook Air, which is quite surprising to me. But to be honest, I think it makes up for it when you log in because the MacBook Air is a lot quicker. Now, I'd just like to point out that both of these devices are the base model. So this is the 256 gigabyte, eight gigabytes of RAM. And this is the 128 gigabyte hard drive with the eight gigs of RAM. The hard drive doesn't really make a difference. I know that this one is marginally faster than this one, but they're both very fast. So it's not gonna make a huge difference, I don't think. So let's do another login timer. Five seconds. And again, MacBook Air is just blazing through it and it's a lot, lot quicker than the MacBook Pro. So I feel like from actually booting up the Mac, the MacBook Air is a lot quicker just in general, even though it takes longer to get to the login screen because the MacBook Pro just takes a while to actually log you in as a user. So that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed this very simple and rudimentary comparison between the two. If you want me to try anything with these two MacBooks, let me know in the comment section below. But apart from that, thank you guys for watching and I will catch you in the next one.